Hello everyone, my name is Erin Stelger and this is my informational speech. Think about how many times today you've used your computer or tablet or your cell phone. Now imagine if you didn't have the ability to use your hands and how that would affect you. You couldn't hold a mouse, you couldn't type your name into the keyboard, you couldn't even swipe right or left on your cell phone. Um, this brings me to what I'd like to talk to you about today, and that is in our technology-reliant society, web accessibility is growing ever more relevant. Just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I used to be an accessibility specialist at the University of Oklahoma in their Human Resources Department. And um, all that means is it was just my job to make sure that any information that was on their website was accessible. And that brings me to my first point, which is, what is web accessibility? Um, all web accessibility is, uh, is it just means that every person going to a website has the right to an, to an equal experience. Not necessarily the same experience, but the, an equal experience, um, and they should have the ability to come away with the same information as everyone else, whether you have a disability or not. Um, the top four disabilities uh, listed on webaim.org, which is a great accessibility website, website are uh, visual disability, hearing disability, motor disability, and cognitive disability. And I'm just gonna give you a few examples of ways that websites would uh, move towards being web accessible for each of these disabilities. Um, for example, for a visual disability, a website would um, create text that was compatible with a screen reader, which is software that someone uh, with low visibility or who's blind can download on their computer and it will read the text to them. Um, so they can hear what's said on the computer. And someone with a hearing disability uh, would use captioning, which is the text that's at, a bottom, at the bottom of like a YouTube video, um, or sometimes you see it on TV. Um, but that's just so they can read what's being said in a video at the bottom of their screen. Someone with motor disabilities, like we talked about earlier, they might um, use a mouse stick to tab through a website. Um, and this would mean that the website would need to have tab through capability, which means you can hit your tab key to navigate through the website and not just um, have to use your mouse. And uh, for cognitive disabilities, the main way to be accessible for cognitive disabilities is keeping your website, um, keeping the text concisely written. Don't be too wordy or use jargon that's hard to understand. Um, using bulleted lists, keeping things organized. Um, those are some of the basic ways to be accessible for a cognitive disability. Um, and that brings me to my next point, which is why is web accessibility relevant? Um, webaim.org, again, they state that one in five people in our nation have a disability. Um, that's approximate, but that's 20%. And that's a pretty big percentage when you're thinking about um, like a business, uh, their consumers, customers, 20% of their customers, they might want to, you know, um, not cut those people off of having access to their website. Like if 20% of Amazon customers couldn't order, that would be a significant amount of lost sales. Um, so it makes sense on a business front to cater to those people. Um, another reason is now there are federal and state guidelines and those are becoming more and more, um, they're stronger. Um, it's, people are already starting to get sued for not having accessible websites, and that's probably going to be the case more and more um, until everyone starts getting on board and having accessible websites. 
Um, you can read about the federal uh, guidelines at ada.gov, and you can read about state guidelines at ok.gov forward slash accessibility. Um, and basically, the more accessible a website is, the more user-friendly it is for everyone. Um, just one example, if you're in a noisy area, um, you can turn closed captioning on your uh, video so you can read what's being said. And um, there are many examples of that. Um, so, sorry, in summary, web accessibility is growing in relevance in our tech-driven world. And I hope that you now have a better understanding of what web accessibility is and how it relates to each of us. Um, and just a final note, Eve Anderson is the accessibility guru at Google. She really knows her stuff. And um, the way she puts it uh, is, in a way, the accessibility problems of today are the mainstream breakthroughs of tomorrow. Thank you for your time.